Okay, continuing on in the series Scrum with GitHub Projects. This is going to be where we talk about tracking your progress and, well, a lot of stuff about the daily Scrum. So thinking about where we are so far in the Scrum framework in this series of videos, we've gotten through the product backlog, the sprint planning meeting, sprint backlog, and now we're getting into the stuff that's going to happen pretty much every single day. So in the next couple of videos, I'm going to focus on stuff that supports the daily Scrum. The daily Scrum is one of the four events in Scrum. It happens every day. It's 15 minutes or less, and it's intended for the team to come together and, well, ask the question, how are we doing? What's our plan to get to done? Are we on target for getting stuff to done? Is there anything in our way of getting to done? So thinking about the stuff that's in our sprint backlog, looking at that plan, reviewing that plan, and adapting that plan, if necessary. So that big question, how is the sprint going? Which is another way of saying trying to maintain situational awareness. Now, you're going to be thinking about situational awareness and like what's going on in your project, even outside of the daily scrum meeting. But that daily scrum meeting is really about the team trying to make sure that they know what's going on. It's also their chance to inspect and adapt on a 24 hour cycle. Look at their plan, review their plan, look at their progress, review their progress, and adapt if anything, well, needs to be adapted. It's also a great time to update your progress. And if you're trying to use GitHub projects to do that, well, that means updating GitHub projects with the current data. And that's great because you're probably gonna be asked that question a lot of how's the project going. So keeping the information in GitHub projects up to date is gonna help keep everybody else up to date too. All right, so that's the intro content for this. Let's go do some demos. Okay, we've finished our sprint planning meeting and here's our backlog view for our project. For our day-to-day -day work, this isn't really the view that we need. We need a view that supports what we do in a daily scrum meeting. So let's switch from this high level view over to a view for the current sprint. Click on the current iteration tab to bring up the view. And here we are on the current iteration view. Current iteration, also known as current sprint. This view represents our plan for the current sprint, AKA the sprint backlog. The sprint backlog is the scrum process artifact that represents which features we intend to do in this sprint and our plan for how to turn those feature requirements into done working software. Put another way, it's our product backlog items and our task for each of those PBIs. This view is organized into columns for each status value. Since this is the first time that we've come into this view in the current sprint, everything is in the no status column, meaning that the status value for each issue hasn't been set yet. I'd like all of the things in our current iteration to have a status of to do in progress or done. To do that, we could come over to each of the items in the no status column and move them individually. But since I need to change the status on all of them, I'll click the first one and then use the keyboard to select the entire list. In this case, on Windows and on Mac, what I'm doing is using the shift key and the down arrow key. And then just click the selected items and drag it from the no status column to the to do column. That'll change the status and give you a little message indicating that it's running a bulk update. The no status column disappears, and down here you see the message that says bulk update completed successfully. You'll probably only need to do that bulk status assignment one time per sprint. I'll just close that bulk update message and then deselect the items. Okay, so if we're in the daily scrum meeting, what are we trying to achieve? The intent is for the team to inspect and adapt their plan for the next 24 hours. Put another way, once per day, the team is gonna to come together to one, review how they're doing so far on delivering their forecasted work, the PBIs for the sprint and two, plan out their next 24 hours. Along the way, they'll also discuss any impediments or blockers to delivery. The goal is to make sure that they're focused on getting the PBIs to done. If I'm looking at this view, I see a ton of stuff that is pending. Nothing is in progress and nothing is done. If this is the first day of the sprint, that's pretty much what I'd expect. Right now, this view is a little jumbled because it's configured to show a list of PBIs, user stories, and tasks, and we can't see which is which. So let's customize the view a bit, bring up the customization menu, and then let's modify the fields that are displayed. The first field I wanna add is issue type. That's displayed in this list as just type. Select that field and that adds it to the visible fields list. And then next we're gonna to want to display the parent issue value. Then the sub-issues progress field. 
And then finally, I'll add the estimate field. I want to stress that I'm adding the estimate field and not the size field. I cover why in a previous video, but the short form is that I don't think the size field is going to be very useful for most Scrum-based teams. Click the Save button. And now we've got a view with a lot more visible data. If you think about your daily Scrum meeting as being your situational awareness meeting, then this all starts to make more sense. This view is still a little jumbled, though, because we have user story items and task items kind of mingled together in the same list. We're going to want to add a slicing option to this view. Slicing lets you quickly switch how your data is viewed, and I'm going to want to slice this by issue type. Adding the option to slice by issue type gives us this panel over here on the left side of the screen. Now, why do I care about slicing by task versus slicing by user story or PBI? Well, if you're in the daily scrum, each of those tells a different story. Let's choose slice by user story and discuss that first. This is probably the view that the product owner cares about most because that person is primarily concerned about feature delivery, not task delivery. The tasks for each PBI are the dev team's plan for how to make the requirement done. If the tasks aren't all done, then the PBI isn't done. If you think about the case of a non-technical product owner, he or she might not really understand what the tasks are about or even care about the tasks. The sub-issue progress display is interesting to that product owner. It gives them a rough feel for what percentage of the work for that requirement is done without getting stuck in the details. But what the product owner really cares about is which requirements are done, which are in progress, and which haven't been started yet. Right now, everything is in the to-do column, so, well, ain't much going on. Let's say that the team decides that they're going to start working on the top priority item in the sprint. According to this view, the top item is the create a new blog post PBI. So if the team is going to work on that, someone should drag the card into the in progress column. Now from the perspective of the team and also from the perspective of the product owner, everyone can see what's going on. One item is in progress and nothing is done yet. There are five tasks for this item and none of those are done either. Now let's change the slice value over to be task and switch this over to the task-oriented view. This task-oriented view is, well, I guess I'd say that this is more of the development team-oriented view. The development team, AKA, the people who actually do the implementation work, ultimately care about delivering whole features, but they're much more focused on the process. They care about delivering done stuff, but they've also thought about how they're gonna get to that done stuff state. And that's represented by the tasks, the tasks are their plan for making that done stuff. Let's think about situational awareness for a second. This view shows the team a lot of stuff that they care about. First off, the columns give them a quick visual overview of which tasks are in which state. But then there's a lot of data that's on each of the actual cards. They can see the title. They can see the parent issue, aka the product backlog item for the task. And they can see the remaining work for this task. And then also up at the top, it shows them the total number of hours in each of the states for all the work they have in that state. Let's assume that this is the first day of the sprint and the team is gonna get started. And let's say that the team starts discussing what they're gonna do today. They pick the design blog post model item and drag that into in progress. And they also decide that they're gonna work on create Cosmos DB container too. Okay, so that's two things in progress, and just to keep this demo simple, let's assume that this is it, and this is the end of the Daily Scrum for this day. Fast forward to the next day in the sprint. The team is back in their next Daily Scrum meeting. So let's say the team is in their meeting, and they start discussing what's done and what's left on these two items, design blog post model and create Cosmos DB container. At the start of the day yesterday, we thought there was 16 hours left on design blog post model. Now we think there's eight hours left. So we wanna update this remaining work value to reflect our current understanding. So we click on the 16 to edit it. And well, that didn't work. I expected that that would let me edit that value. Instead, it's added a filter. It's filtering this view to show us everything that also has an estimate value of 16. That's not what we wanted to do. To get back to where we were, click the 16 again, and that'll clear the filter. To edit the estimate, we'll need to open the item. To open the item, click on the title value for the item, and that brings up the editor. Then you'll go to the estimate field for the item and change the value. 
So change that from 16 hours to 8 hours based on our new estimate of the remaining work. Be sure to click the check button and then close the editor by clicking the X button. As you can see here, the estimate value now shows us 8 hours remaining. Let's say that the team discusses the progress on the Create Cosmos DB Container item and they decide that it's done. They're going to want to change the status to done and update the remaining work to be zero hours. Click and drag that card into the done column and that updates the status. Right now in GitHub projects, this doesn't automatically wipe out the estimated remaining work value, so you have to do that manually. Click on the title, open the editor, then go to the estimate field. Change that value to zero and then close the editor to get back to the sprint view. Remember, I tend to think of the task slicing view as being aimed at the development team. Let's flip the slice value to user story. This is the feature focused, the PBI focused view of the current sprint. The dev team has one PBI in progress right now. One of the five tasks for that item has been done. None of the PBIs are completely done. So that's the product owner centric view of the sprint. And it's easy to get that understanding of the status just by quickly taking a look at this user story sliced view. Let's go back to the dev centric view and wrap up the daily scrum for the second day of the sprint. The team discusses what else they're planning to work on today, and they decide to pick the implement repository interface task. They drag that to in progress. And that wraps it up for the daily scrum meeting for day two of the sprint. Let's fast forward a couple more days and the team has gotten all the tasks done for one of the PBIs. They've discussed it with the product owner and the product owner has accepted it as done. Let's flip over to the product owner centric view. And we can see the create new blog post PBI and see that the sub issue progress is saying five out of five items are done. So 100% done on the sub tasks. The product owner says that this is done. So let's mark the PBI as done. To mark it as done, just drag the card into the done column. And now the team has one PBI done. And the estimate total for the user story item type has gone from zero to eight. Remember for PBIs, AKA user stories, we're putting story points into the estimate field. There's a metric in Scrum called velocity that measures how much done stuff got delivered by the team in a sprint. Well, the team got one thing done, so this far in this sprint, they've got a velocity of eight. Put another way, this estimate total in the done column represents your sprint's velocity. Moving on with the sprint, the team discusses which item they're going to work on next. The next highest item in the priority is the list of blog post PBI. Drag that item into the in progress column. Okay, so if you're the product owner or the scrum master or even a team member, you can quickly get a feel for the status of this sprint. So if this is day number four of a two week sprint, I'm probably feeling okay. The team has a decent chance of getting all this done by the end of the sprint. But let's say that we're on say day 10 of a two week sprint. Eh, well, I'd probably be starting to get a little skeptical that that automated build using GitHub Actions PBI is gonna make it over the finish line before the end of the sprint. Anyway, hopefully you can see how this current iteration view along with issue type slicing can help everyone keep track of how you're doing, situational awareness and whatnot. In the next video, I'm gonna cover how the team can use the reporting features in GitHub projects to get yet another view of sprint status and another way of maintaining situational awareness. If you like this video, please consider clicking like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.